even like the children of Israel. They were caught between the Red Sea and the Egyptians. At that point, they thought it was all over. But the Lord came through for them. The Lord is coming through for someone this morning in the name of Jesus.
Just open your mouth and speak those tongues to him. Just open your mouth and speak to him. Just open your mouth and worship him. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. The words are broken. Chains are broken. He's making a way. 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 Those bodies are being lifted. 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 Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. God bless you all. Just put your hands together to find your peace. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 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 Daddy, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration for who you are and for the things that you have done. You are the almighty God. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Sikenu. You are Jehovah El Roy. You are the God who sees. Your hands are not short that they cannot deliver. Your ears are not deaf that they cannot hear. You sit upon the circles of the earth. You are the God who reigns and rules in the affairs of men. Apart from you, like you, there's no other God. Alpha and Omega, soon and the coming King. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. Please accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Daddy, as we go into your word, please minister to us. Spirit of the living God, come glorify Jesus. Let the Father be glorified in the Son. Anoint my lips. Speak to me. Speak through me. Speak to our situations. But just glorify Jesus so that the Father will be glorified in the Son. And let your name alone be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. A very good morning to us all. Uh, today is the 21st of June, and ordinarily we would have been in church physically. But the Bible says in Romans 8.28, and now we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose. So there must be a good reason, because God doesn't make mistakes, that we are not in church physically. Thank God that we can worship online as we're doing today, and we will continue to do so on Facebook, YouTube, the website, and all our channels. In the meantime, I'd want us to pray because I discover that some of us might be disappointed. Romans 8, 20 says, And now we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So we're going to pray. Say, Father, everything that's happening now, let it work together for your church. Let it work together for good for your church. Let it work together for good for your church. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. They're going to pray again. Say, Father, everything that's happening now, let it work together for my good. Let it work together for my good. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to pray again because the Bible says Jesus is the wisdom and the power of God. You say, Father... Give our government at all levels the wisdom required to deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. The wisdom required, give to our government at all levels. Zubra hila raba koriendi riba bosha. Egedere bo koro bo koto libregede. Give the wisdom required to our government at all levels. Federal government, state government, local government. Rabush ke bredi ele bro koto riaraba. To deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name we pray. Lastly, we're going to pray. Say, Father, in your mercy. Please bring an end to this pandemic. Please bring an end to this pandemic. In your mercy, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you because we know you will hear and you will answer our prayers. And we are prayed with faith and thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So don't lose hope. Just do like this. Encourage yourself. All is well. Amen. Today I want to share with us a message that will have two parts. There is hope. Part one and part two. I believe I preached part one of this message recently. Must be sometime last month. But God is laying on my heart to, to teach us today. Not to preach. There's a difference between the two. So I pray that God will grant me grace to operate in the spirit of a teacher and I would listen. Job 14, verse 7 to 9. Job 14, verse 7 to 9. I read from the King James Version of the Bible. For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, 
and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Though the root thereof wax old in the earth, and the stock thereof die in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. What is God telling us today? When a sentence starts with four, it's like starting it with therefore. So there are certain things that have happened. For example, we're reading from Job 14. If you read Job chapter 1, you can see Job started life, everything was good, hunky-dory, like December last year, like January this year. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> things started happening to him from verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Like, you know, February, March, April, May, and now June. So the Bible says, for there is hope. In spite of what is happening, there is hope of a tree. That what? That even if you cut it down, it will sprout again. What else? That the tender branch thereof will not cease. And that even if the root in the, in the ground is old and it dies, yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth boughs like a plant. So the first thing I want you to note is this. If a tree is cut down, it's not the same as if a tree is uprooted. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 is my witness. Jesus said, every tree that my father has not planted shall be uprooted. And I want to remind you, I did biology in school. Maybe you did science or whatever you did. That if a tree is disconnected from its roots, and the root is the source from which nutrients come, then the tree is as good as dead. But this tree that we're studying today, they say it's just cut down. And the Bible tells us from Job 14 that we read that the root is still in the ground. So there's hope. I want to encourage you today, no matter what has happened, no matter what you are going through, there is hope. What is hope? Hope is the expectation that things will turn around, even if they are bad right now. Now the question you should be asking yourself is that, if the tree is cut down, where can the hope be? Or where is the hope coming from? The hope is coming from the fact that the Bible says that it will sprout again. How did it get to where it was before? Is it not that somebody planted it and it sprouted and it grew? Eh, if you have lost some things, you have not lost your life. The same life that you used, that you had to get those things before you lost them, you still have it now. You will get those things back again in the name of Jesus. The Bible is saying that the same way that the tree grew before it can grow again. You see, there is still potential for growth. This scripture keeps coming alive to me. Ecclesiastes tells us that a living dog is better than a dead lion. The difference between dead and life is simple. A man that's alive can pretend to be dead, but a man that's dead cannot pretend to be alive. That is the truth. So, God is saying to us here, if I have done it before, I can do it again. If I did it in the days of Job, I will do it for you. Uh, people will tell me that, okay, yeah, so if you cut the tree and you leave it and it starts growing, it's nature. No problem, you can call it nature. I call it God's grace. The thing is this, God created the tree with inherent ability to grow. Just like he has created man in his image, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28, and created man according to his likeness, and give man a mandate to multiply, to have dominion, subdue, and replenish the earth. So if you are created in the image of God and according to his likeness, and God is the one that said in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, when there was darkness and chaos and the earth was without form, let there be light. You too, you can say, let there be light. And if you don't want to say it, I will say it for you. Let there be light in the name of Jesus. So if you are cut down in any way, relax. You are coming up again in the name of Jesus. What else? It says that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Why? In John chapter 15, John chapter 15 from verses 1 to 3, Jesus said that he is the one that's the vine. We are the branches. So if the enemy is like they can cut off the branches, they can't do anything to the vine. The vine can pick the branch and put it back and cause it to grow again. I see God causing somebody to grow again in the name of Jesus. I want to remind you of what I said earlier. 
that if a tree is cut down, it's all the same as if it's uprooted. When my God wants to deal with a tree, he uproots it. That's what he says in Matthew 15, 13. He uproots it so that the tree doesn't have any connection anymore to its source of nutrients. But you and I, as children of God, we still have connection to Jesus Christ is our taproot. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you are still alive, even if you are, you know, injured, even if you are, you know, knocked down, it doesn't matter. I'm here to tell you that there is hope for you. You will come up again in the name of Jesus. You know, this pandemic season has its own advantages. So we spend a lot more time at home, at least I do. I don't know about you. And um, our first son is at home, he's in university, but he's attending lectures online. So when the lectures are over and when I finish what I'm doing and my wife, we usually have much more time to fellowship together. So one day, the guy downloaded some stuff, uh, BGT and AGT, America's Got Talent and Britain's Got Talent. And he showed us some very inspirational videos. Let me share one of them with you. This was from America's Got Talent. A man was jailed for 30-something years for a crime he did not commit. Ha! 30-something years for a crime he did not commit. All throughout the time he was in jail, apparently he's a Christian. He kept encouraging himself, he kept encouraging himself, and he refused to be bitter. Eventually, by reason of new technology and DNA, they discovered he wasn't the one that committed the crime. And they brought him out. And this guy came to America's Got Talent. That's a big talent show. And you know, when he came, the, 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 the major person who deals with America's Got Talent is a man called Simon. So Simon told him, he said, wait, tell us your story before you sing. So the man told the story. So we heard. And then he told him to sing. When the guy finished singing... For those of you who watch, I watch sparingly. That day I watched because, you know, we're all at home. He got what you call a golden buzzer. A golden buzzer takes you away from all the preliminary judges straight to the semifinals. Imagine if that man lost hope. Imagine. 30-something years. God is telling me to tell somebody, there is hope. 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 The next point, it says, though the root thereof wax old in the earth. So even if you get old, this man, 36 years, even if he was 20 when they threw him in, do you know how old that he will be? Even if he was 19, do you know how old that will be? Ah. <laughs> the Bible tells me in Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21, that as old as Abraham was, Abraham hoped against hope. I like that. He hoped against hope. When there was no reason to have hope, he still kept hoping. Why? Because he knew that our God is the one that called the things that are dead as though they be alive. Anything that God speaks to and is speaking to you now, it will come alive in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine? I've shared this testimony several times. I know somebody, and it's not that I read it on the internet. It's not that somebody shared a testimony with me. I was there. Somebody who got married for the first time at 55. I was at the wedding. Every step of the way, my koro koro I, I saw it. If I didn't record it in video, my phone is in the video in my head. Nobody can tell me about the story. 55. <laughs> I've heard live testimonies, especially for those of us who go to camp or we watch online. Somebody having a child for the first time, 58, 55, 60 something. Tell yourself, there's hope for you. There's hope for you. Hope for you. Hope for you. What else? He says that if the stock thereof die in the ground. I've told you I'm not preaching today. I want to teach. So God is saying that if the stock appears to be dead... In, 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 in Romans chapter 4, Romans 4 from verse 19 to 21, Romans 4, 19 to 21, the Bible says that Abraham did not consider that the womb of his wife Sarah was dead and that even his own loins, they were dead. To be dead means you don't have life and you're unable to give life. At 90 years old, how can a womb come alive again and give birth? It means that no matter how impossible the situation seems, 
God will come through for you. Let me read what Romans 4, 19 to 21 says in the American Standard Version of the Bible. And without being weakened in faith, talking about Abraham, he considered his own body now as good as dead. He being about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, yet looking unto the promise of God, he wavered not through unbelief, but waxed strong through faith, giving glory to God, and being fully assured that what he had promised, he was able to perform. No matter how impossible the situation is, God will come through for you. Please tell yourself again, there is hope. There is hope. I heard a testimony recently of a woman who was being treated for cancer. And after a while, this was in the United States of America, but she's, a, she's an African. I think she's from Botswana. The doctors told her siblings, her sisters, this woman is as good as dead. Just leave her alone. But the sisters didn't agree. They raised up prayer. They contacted a man of God. He prayed. He raised prayer in a prayer chain to which I belong. And on the 9th of May, this woman shared her testimony online that they had left her for dead, but she was alive sharing the testimony with us. Please tell yourself there is hope. What else? The Bible says, yet through the scent of water, no matter how dead that root is, it will board. Once it can smell water, it will board. Now, this is the question. Does water have a smell? This speaks of the grace and the ability to discern or perceive that there's a turning point that God is about to effect. I feel led to prophesy at this time to somebody watching this now that God is set to overturn, overturn, overturn in your life. That the worst is over and the best is yet to come in the name of Jesus. My witness is from Ezekiel 21, 26, and 27. The Bible says God can overturn, overturn, and overturn. Let me explain something. You see, after every night, there must be a daytime. And the daytime starts with the morning. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us that weeping can only endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Please, if you are listening or watching, it means you are alive and God's favor is on you. Let me read Psalm 30 verse 5 as my witness. He says, anger is but for a moment, but his favor is for a lifetime or in his favor is life. So if you are alive, you are enjoying God's favor. Weeping can only endure for a night, your joy is coming forth this morning in the name of Jesus. And number seven, as I begin to round up, it says, and bring forth boughs like a plant. That means that this tree that was cut down, even though it's old, even though things are against it, it will eventually blossom. That means it will be restored. Or directly put, somebody is going to enjoy a restoration. My witness is from Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Colossians 1, 27, the B part says, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Glory is the opposite of shame. Christ in me is the hope of glory. My other witness is from Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 27. God said, I will restore the years that the locust has eaten. So it doesn't matter what you have lost from March to date, from January to date, from last year to date. God said he will restore the years. He can restore time because he's time personified. He says, my people will not be put to shame. He said, you will know and realize that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and there is none else. My people shall never be put to shame. If you are the one that God is talking to, as I know I'm the one that God is talking to, but I know I'm not the only one, then you should shout a loud hallelujah. But... But, but, but. Joel 2.27 says, And you shall know, understand, and realize that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, there is none else. My people, my people, shall never be put to shame. If you don't know him as your Lord, your God, he can be a savior for you. In John chapter 14, verse 6, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. I'd like us to pray this morning, especially if you're watching and you are not yet born again, or you gave your life to Christ in the past and you backslid or you are backsliding now, 
you like to be reconnected to him so you can be his people. He says, my people shall never be put to shame. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. I commit it to your hands, everyone who's taking the decision to surrender their life to you. Please, in your mercy, accept them. Write their name in the book of life. Let your blood speak on their behalf. Erase any record written against them and let all be well with them, spirit, soul, and body, because we are prayed with faith and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations if you pray the prayer. The Almighty God bless you. You are welcome into the family of God. Kindly watch the service online to the end. There's two numbers on the screen. You can please call so we can pray along with you and help you with fellowship to grow. And I would also encourage you to continue to follow us online until such a time as when we can have services in the church premises, which is at Plot 101B, Babs Animashan Street, right by Bode Thomas. But meantime, watch online, and the Lord will keep you and help you as you grow in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we take our offering today, I'd like us to take a few prayer points, just five. Very simple. I'll read them out. You're at home, and you can... We'll pray together for a brief period now, and then you can continue praying at home. Amen. The first prayer point is, Father, thank you for your word. Father, thank you for your word. The second prayer point is, Father, help me to keep hope alive. Father, help me to keep hope alive. The third prayer point is, Father, everywhere that I have lost hope, Please restore my hope. Please restore my hope. The fourth prayer point is your own personal prayer point. Your own personal prayer point. And the fifth prayer point is, Father, thank you for answered prayers. So I'll take them again. Just read over. Number one, Father, thank you for your word. Number two, Father, help me to keep hope alive. Number three, everywhere that I've lost hope, please restore my hope. Number four, your personal prayer points. Number five, thanksgiving for answered prayers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We're grateful to you for speaking to us today. Lord, we ask today that you please accept our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that wherever we have lost hope, you help us to keep hope alive. Where I have lost hope, help me to keep hope alive. Lord, help me to keep hope alive. Help me to keep hope alive. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray again. We say, Father, everywhere I have lost so please restore my hope. Everywhere I've lost hope, Father, please restore my hope. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick, but the answer when it comes it gives life. So, Lord, I'm praying. You know my personal prayer points. Zumbra, hila, raba, kuri, nekeri, ababa, ababa, ababa. So, bredi, ekeli, brege, de, rokutele, brokur, nekesete, brego, li, ababa, ababa. That which I've been waiting on you for. Reko, subre, hilele, brokur, ene, de, bokur, ene, kabosha. Lord, bring them to pass. Kure, kuteli, brege, robo, kondo, li, brege, bo, shataya, ababa. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's begin to thank God for answered prayers. Kandra, hilele, boko, shataya, ababa. Father, we thank you. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. So our Father and our God, we thank you. We appreciate you so much for today. Thank you for encouraging us, teaching us that there's hope. Thank you for showing us how. Thank you, Lord, because the why is because you are Lord. And you will do so that your name will be glorified. Please accept our thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Throughout this season, as we pray... Lord, hear and answer our prayers. Don't let us lose hope. And where we have lost hope, please restore the hope. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage us to give our offerings, and um, then we'll pray. Amen. Package offering. The account numbers to which you can give the offering are being scrolled on the screen. If you are paying your tithe, 
The account number is also there. Let us pray. Precious Father, we thank you for all, the, all of your children who are giving their offerings online. Lord, accept us, accept our offering, and let the offering be used for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. We lift up those who have paid their tithe also. Father, let the benefit of tithers be their testimony. Let the heavens be open over them. Don't let things be tight. Give insight, give wisdom, give counsel, give revelation, give instructions that will prosper us all so that your name will be glorified. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you for worshiping with us online. I want to encourage you to join us midweek and then once again next Sunday. Remember to keep praying both for yourself, for the government, and that this COVID-19 situation would come to an end pretty soon. Thank you and God bless you. Let's share the grace in fellowship. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord.